Hello, Tim and Liam. How are you? Um, we're, we're back with Grandfather Frog, and we're in Chapter 7, Grandfather Frog's Big Mouth Gets Him in Trouble. And uh, I just sent you a video that I made about how my big mouth sometimes gets me into trouble. And I hope you enjoy that. Uh, okay, um, let me think. Now, I promised you a story about my dad before each video. Well, this isn't a story exactly so much as it is a good me lots of good memories. When I was uh, a little girl, Dad was on the road a lot, but whenever he came home, he always took me fishing. And I'm sure your dad can tell you about all the occasions that Grandfather Frog took him fishing. And um, I remember the smell of his tackle box. You know, it smelled a little, it smelled a little fishy. And actually, Dad had, uh, at one point, a car, a yellow Volkswagen station wagon, and uh, everybody called it the Fishmobile, because uh, he, that's where he kept his uh, tackle box for, and, and his fishing poles, and the car smelled kind of fishy. So I just, I just remember, now I'm allergic to fish myself, so Dad would always have to take the fish off the hook for me. <laughs> And um, I couldn't be around while he was cooking the fish because I'm allergic to it. But the fishing itself, you know, either sitting in a boat with dad or um, when I was a real little kid, he didn't have a boat. And so we would go to this bridge and there was this big pond and we would cast our lines off of the uh, off of off of this bridge into the water below. And then when we lived in Delaware, um, Every spring, uh, the state would stock these brooks full of trout. And so I remember one day, it was a school day. Dad got me up at like 4.30, and we went to Dunkin' Donuts, and I had a donut and a hot chocolate. And then we went down to uh, the local stream that had just been stocked. And it was, oh, it was a beautiful, and, and, you know, the sun was just coming up by the time we got there around 5.15. And um, we fished until uh, until a little after seven. I can't remember if we caught anything, but we had a great time fishing. And then Dad took me to school, and then he went off to work. Uh, so I mean, that's that's the kind of things that we did together, and 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 they're just really really nice memories. Um, whenever I pass a Dunkin' Donuts, I I think about Dad. So th those are that's the Daddy story for tonight. All right, Chapter 7, Grandfather Frog's Big Mouth Gets Him in Trouble. Grandfather Fro Frog has a great big mouth. You know that. Everyone does. His friends at the, uh, of the Smiling Pool, the Laughing Brook, and the Green Meadows have teased Grandfather Frog a great deal about the size of his mouth. But he hasn't minded in the least. Not the very least. You see, he learned a long time ago that a big mouth is very handy for catching foolish green flies, especially when two happen to come along together. So he is rather proud of his big mouth, just as he is of his goggly eyes. But once in a while, his big mouth gets him into trouble. It's a way big mouths have. It holds so much that it makes him greedy sometimes. He stuffs it full after his stomach already has all that it can hold. And then, of course, he can't swallow. Then Grandfather Frog looks very foolish and silly and undignified, and everybody calls him a greedy fellow who is old enough to know better and who ought to be ashamed of himself. Perhaps he is, but he never says so, and he is almost sure to do the same thing over again the first chance he has. Now, it happened that one morning when Grandfather Frog had had a very good breakfast of foolish green flies and really didn't need another single thing to eat, who should come along but little Joe Otter, who had been down to the big river fishing. He had eaten all he could hold, and he was taking the rest of his catch to a secret hiding place up the Laughing Brook. Now, Grandfather Frog is very fond of fish for a change, and when he saw those that little Joe Otter had, his eyes glistened, and in spite of his full stomach, his mouth, his mouth watered. Excuse me. Let's get this back. All right. Good 
morning, Grandfather Frog. Have you had your breakfast yet? Called Little Joe Otter. Grandfather Frog wanted to say no, but he always tells the truth. Yes, he replied. I've had my breakfast, such as it was. Why do you ask? Oh, for no reason in particular. I just thought that if you hadn't, you might like a fish. But as long as you've had breakfasted, of course you don't want one, said Little Joe, his bright eyes beginning to twinkle. He held the fish out so that Grandfather Frog could see just how plump and nice they were. Chuggerum, exclaimed Grandfather Frog. Those certainly are very nice fish, very nice fish indeed. It is very nice of you to think of a poor old fellow like me, and I, well, I might find room for just a teeny weeny one, if you can spare it. Little Joe Otter knows all about Grandfather Frog's greediness. He looked at Grandfather Frog's white and yellow waistcoat and saw how it was already stuffed full to bursting. The twinkle in his eyes grew more mischievous than ever as he said, of course I can, but I wouldn't think of giving you such an such an old friend such a teeny weeny one. With that, Little Joe picked up the biggest fish he had and tossed it over to Grandfather Frog. It landed close by his nose with a great splash, and it was almost half as big as Grandfather Frog himself. It was plump and looked so tempting that Grandfather Frog forgot all about his full stomach. He even forgot to be polite and thank Little Joe Otter. He just opened his great big mouth and seized the fish. Yes, sir, that is just what he did. Almost before you could wink an eye, the fish started down Grandfather Frog's throat head first. Now, you know Grandfather Frog has no teeth, and so he cannot bite things in two. He has to swallow them whole. That is just what he started to do with the fish. It went all right until the head reached his stomach, but you can't put anything more into a thing already full and Grandfather Frog's stomach was packed as full as it could be of foolish green flies. There the fish stuck, and gulp and swallow as hard as he could, Grandfather Frog couldn't make that fish go a bit far farther. Then he tried to get it out again, but it had gone so far down his throat that he couldn't get it back. Grandfather Frog began to choke. Chapter 8, Spotty the Turtle Plays Doctor Greed's a dreadful thing to see, as everybody will agree. At first, Little Joe Otter, sitting on the bank of the smiling pool, laughed himself almost sick as he watched Grandfather Frog trying to swallow a fish almost as big as himself, when his white and yellow waistcoat was already stuffed so full of foolish green flies that there wasn't room for anything more. Such greed would have been disgusting if it hadn't been so very, very funny. At least it was funny at first, for the fish had stuck, with the tail hanging out of Grandfather Frog's big mouth. Grandfather Frog hitched this way and hitched that way on his big green lily pad, trying his best to swallow. Twice he tumbled off with a splash into the smiling pool. Each time he scrambled back again and rolled his great goggly eyes in silent appeal to Little Joe Otter to come to his aid. But Little Joe was laughing so that he had to hold his sides and he didn't understand that Grandfather Frog really was in trouble. Billy Mink and Jerry Muskrat came along and as soon as they saw Grandfather Frog, they began to laugh too. They just laughed and laughed and laughed until the tears came. They rolled over and over on the bank and kicked their heels from sheer enjoyment. It was the funniest thing they had seen for a long, long time. Did you ever see such greed? gasped Billy Mink. Why don't you pull it out and start over again? shouted Little Joe Otter. Now, this is just what Grandfather Frog was trying to do. At least he was trying to pull the fish out. He hadn't the least desire in the world to try swallowing it again. In fact, he fell just, felt just then as if he never, never wanted to see another fish so long as he lived. But Grandfather Frog's hands are not made for grasping slippery things, and the tail of a fish is very slippery indeed. He tried first with one hand and then the other, and at last with both. It was no use at all. He just couldn't budge that fish. He couldn't cough it up because it had gone too far down for that. 
The more he clawed at that waving tail with his hands, the funnier he looked, and the harder little Joe Otter and Billy Mink and Jerry Muskrat laughed. They made such a noise that Spotty the Turtle, who had been taking a sunbath on the end of an old log, slipped into the water and started to see what it was all about. Now, Spotty the Turtle is very, very slow on land, but he is a good swimmer. He hurried now because he didn't want to miss the fun. At first, he didn't see Grandfather Frog. Let's see, here's a picture. Uh, as soon as they saw Grandfather Frog, they began to laugh too. That's Jerry Muskrat and, and Little Joe Otter and uh, Billy the Mink. Look at them laughing at Grandfather Frog, who's got a fish stuck in his throat. So, so Spotty the Turtle has gotten here now. What's the joke? He asked. Little Joe Otter simply pointed to Grandfather Frog. Little Joe had laughed so much that he couldn't even speak. Spotty looked over to the big green lily pad and started to laugh too. Then he saw great tears rolling down from Grandfather Frog's eyes and heard little choky sounds. He stopped laughing and started for Grandfather Frog as fast as he could swim. He climbed right up on the big green lily pad and, reaching out, grabbed the end of the fishtail in his beak-like mouth. Then Spotty the turtle settled back and pulled, and Grandfather Frog settled back and pulled. Splash! Grandfather Frog had fallen backward into the smiling pool on one side of the big green lily pad. Splash! Spotty the turtle had fallen backward into the smiling pool on the opposite side of the big green lily pad. And the fish, which had caused all the trouble, lay floating in the water. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Grasp, gasped Grandfather Frog as he feebly crawled back on the lily pad. A minute more, and I would have choked to death. Don't mention it, replied Spotty the Turtle. I never, never will, promised Grandfather Frog. Well, that was why Grandfather Frog came pretty close to killing himself. He, did, he didn't need old uh, the, the, the hawk or the heron to kill him that time. His own greed got in the way. That'll be it for tonight. And the next chapter is Chapter 9, Old Mr. Toad Visits Grandfather Frog. We'll see what happens when they get together. Good night, boys. <laughs>